welcome everyone to the fifth annual Family Philanthropy Day. It's called Making a Difference at a Distance. That's why we're all on Zoom. And thank you for joining us on this beautiful Saturday morning. We have a really short program so you can get outside very soon and enjoy the weather. We hope um, you've had time for your breakfast or coffee or tea. I know you're all waking up. And um, some of you have been to Family Philanthropy Day before in years past, and we're really grateful that you've logged in to come again this year. And hopefully next year we'll be all together in person. And we also wanna thank you for volunteering with us um, by collecting books. I'm gonna show you, I've, I'm, we're collecting books. We just posted on our neighborhood list. We have some here, and I'm gonna show you a great picture of my front porch. We just posted on our neighborhood that we need books. So if you post on your neighborhood list, you can get people dropping off books like this uh, for books between kids and then the snack packs for search homeless. So even if you haven't done that yet, you still have a chance to do that and help um, families in our community. So um, my name is Jennifer Touche. I'm vice president of personal and family philanthropy at Greater Houston Community Foundation. And I help lead our Center for Family Philanthropy and this program, Family Philanthropy Day, is uh, one of the programs that our center does every year uh, with generous families like yours. So we're glad you're here. Uh, just real briefly, Greater Houston Community Foundation is a philanthropic organization. It is a community foundation. And so really what that means is that we help families like yours give back to the community and uh, work together to make sure that everyone in our community has opportunities to learn, to live in a safe home, to live healthy lives. And, and you're part of that today. And you're part of Greater Houston Community Foundation. And um, most of you know us, but if you don't, if you or if there's parents logged in with you, you want to learn more about how we work with families, just reach out to us in the chat or email us or after the program. Um, we're here for you um, to help you make a positive impact in the community. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to um, our program over to Allison Hale from our team. She is our Family Philanthropy Senior Associate, and she's really put this program together for you with some other team members that you'll um, hear from later. And she'll be joined by Isha Vedical and Emery Ying. Isha is the president of our, hi Isha, I hope you guys can see Isha. Isha is the president of our youth leadership team. She's a junior at Lamar High School. And Emery Ying is the vice president um, of our youth leadership team. And she is a junior, yes, I'm getting that right, at the Post Oak School. And they're gonna help us through the program today. Um, so we are, are glad you're here. And as you participate, when you're dropping off your books or your snacks or um, you're collecting things around your house, we hope you'll send us pictures of you and your family volunteering. Um, we at least wanna see your faces that way. And I'll turn it over to Allison and Isha. Thanks everyone. Great, thanks so much, Jennifer, and um, good morning and welcome again uh, to our fifth annual Family Philanthropy Day. My name is Allison Hale. I am a senior associate with Greater Houston Community Foundation, and I oversee all of our family and youth volunteer and grant making initiatives for the Family Giving Circle. Um, I would like to ask, first of all, if you're comfortable doing so and you don't have your camera turned on, please do turn it on so we can see your face. Totally fine. If not, uh, we recognize it's Saturday morning and some of you might still be a little sleepy. It's fine. Um, for those of you who have joined us in the past, you will notice that obviously this year the structure is a little different. While we would have preferred and would have loved to have been together in person, we do want to say thank you to all of our participants for coming together during this time. Um, we're so excited to have all of you join us virtually, and we appreciate you taking time out of your Saturday to learn about how we can collectively make a difference at a distance. So before we begin the learning portion of our program today, I would like to take a minute to recognize everyone involved in making our Family Philanthropy Day a success. First and foremost, I wanna recognize the 19 members of our youth leadership team. The youth leadership team is a group of students ages 12 to 18 
who offer their time, talent, and treasure as they learn about how to become thoughtful and strategic philanthropists within their communities. Being a member of the youth leadership team is a great way for our youth to develop, to develop their values, independent thinking, decision-making power, community knowledge, and most importantly, leadership skills. They have all made individual contributions to this year's Family Philanthropy Day. So I'm gonna take a minute, let us recognize their, their efforts. Round of applause, everyone, for our youth leadership team. Yay. Yay. In a little bit, we are going to hear not only from members of the youth leadership team, but also from the members of our featured nonprofit partners. Next, I would like to thank Julia Holstein with Books Between Kids, Karen Sweetland with Generation Serve, and Molly Connor and Tal Costas with Search Homeless Services. We really appreciate all of the work each organization is doing to shed light on important issues facing our community. I would also like to extend gratitude to everyone who continues to support the Greater Houston Community Foundation, including our dedicated donors and committed members of the Center for Family Philanthropy. And of course, we wouldn't be here today without the help of our staff. Um, thank you so much to Alicia Jacobs and Allison Sullivan for all of your efforts behind the scenes. And with that, I would like to introduce you to Isha Vedical, president of the Youth Leadership Team. Isha? Hi everyone, my name is Isha Bedical and I'm a junior at Lamar High School. This will be my fifth year to attend Family Philanthropy Day with my family. The purpose of Family Philanthropy Day is to have all families come together to learn and understand challenges facing our community so that we can help to diminish these problems. It is especially important that we do it as a family because we can make sure that each generation has the same values of helping our community and working to see a better future passed down. We are able to continue having the same belief of trying to create a better community. We are here today to learn about the importance of literacy and how we can support community members who are experiencing homelessness. Not everyone has the opportunity to access books and many young children miss out on valuable learning experiences as a result. We have a purpose and a duty to our community to help those to ensure we are giving back and that we are all working together to see the best outcomes for these populations. To, to help frame the purpose of today, I would like to share some data on both homelessness and literacy in Houston. Approximately 3,400 individuals experience the trauma of homelessness on a, and on any given day. Over the course of the year, 36,000 individuals in our community will experience homelessness. In terms of liter literacy, one in four third graders in the greater Houston area scored unsatisfactorily on the State of Texas Assessment of Academic Readiness reading assessment in 2013. Research indicates that reading below expected third grade levels is highly correlated to future academic challenges, as well as dropout incarcer incarceration and poverty rates. And now I would like to turn the program over to Emory Yan. Um, so hi, my name is Emery, as you guys know, and I'm a junior at the post Oak School. And now I will be leading a fun icebreaker. Um, so it's kind of like a little scavenger hunt. So um, if I would like to ask everybody to either go find their favorite book or favorite snack that they have in their house and um, I will be giving you one minute to go find these items and then come back to the call. Um, so um, if you guys want, you can turn off your cameras during this minute while you're going to find something. Um, so your minute uh, starts now, I guess. Three, two, one. Okay, so I hope everybody was able to find an item. And so now we're going to do a little show and tell. Um, so first, if anybody chose a book, I would like them to show it and tell us why. So actually, I can go as an example because I chose a book. So I chose The Lightning Thief 
the first book in the ser- in the Percy Jackson series, and I chose it because it is my favorite series, and I think everybody should definitely read it, no matter what age you are. Um, so, if someone would like to unmute and go next, feel free. Um, I can go next. I my favorite. I picked a snack. My favorite snacks are yogurt covered pretzels. We don't have any right now, but we have some pretzels. So there's my bag of pretzels. All right, I'll go next. So I picked a book. This is probably my favorite book almost ever. And it's just a collection of all the Calvin and Hobbes like comics. And since I was like three years old, like I just love this book. And it's like, I've reread them like at least a hundred times. And it's just been like kind of a staple of my childhood. I think it, it's just fantastic. Uh, I'll go next. Um, I chose a snack, and for my snack, I chose these uh, seaweed packets, but it's the organic kind, so not really my favorite, but yeah, these are the best. How about the Wilkins family? It looks like we have some younger kiddos in that screen. We do, and they are a little camera shy, but um, this is James's favorite book, and it is huge. I don't know if you can see, but it's um, just a really fun book that you can look at for hours and hours, and you always find something new, but it's child size. I mean, it's huge. It's Richard Scary's biggest book ever, and he partly <laughs> chose it so that he could hide behind it. <laughs> books, books have multiple functions. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so thank you for uh, to everyone who shared. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed that icebreaker. And so the purpose of this little scavenger hunt show and tell activity was to show you how easy it is to find food or a book to read and how for a lot of children in Houston, that's not exactly the case. And so for this reason, we should really appreciate the organizations like Books Between Kids and Search Homeless Service for helping improve the lives of these children and families. Um, and so now we are going to watch videos from our youth leadership team and nonprofit partners. Hi, Tally. I'm a junior at St. John's um, and making a difference at a distance to me just means like looking at problems that we see around us and trying to help fix them even if we can't be up close trying to still help make a difference um, whether it be like slightly limited or whatever um, and basically just keep doing what we were doing because even though we uh, might not be able to go actually experience what these places that we're giving grants to do, um, we're still helping people. So I think that's important. I'm Max Finkelstein. I'm a senior at Episcopal High School. And my idea of helping people from a distance means even if we can't directly help people with our actions, I think that we can empower others to help accomplish change, whether it be through grants or providing resources to other people, uh, even through like Zoom and virtual resources. Like I was tutoring kids via Zoom during the summer. And it's things like that that we can do from a distance that I think make a difference. Hi, I'm Kenna Suttle. I am a freshman at Episcopal High School. And I think um, like giving from a distance kind of means to me is like looking at the bigger picture and like seeing everything, maybe not that surrounds us, but like everyone in the world, I guess. Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Hartman and I'm a junior at a fifth school high school. And I think helping from a distance is just like most people said, even though we're, we can't be in person with each other, I think it's really important, important to stay uh, on the topic of helping out our, out our community, you know, making sure this problem of being uh, isolated doesn't change our, um, Back on I'm Alex Finkelstein. I'm a junior at Episcopal. Um, and giving at a distance kind of means to me like we can serve as a catalyst for change. Like instead of us actually getting out and doing the work, we help to inspire other people. I'm Duncan. I'm a senior at Kincaid. And I guess 
what I would take from it is that you should do what you can to support people in the same ways that you would in regular life or pre-pandemic life, but also try and reduce the amount of time that we have to do that by just staying separate. I'm Alina. Um, I'm a freshman at St. Agnes, and I think it's important to like keep trying to help people, even if it's from a distance, so we can like donate and basically do like all the same things just from a distance. My name is Dia. I'm a sophomore at Lore. Helping out with through a distance, um, to me, I think it's especially important now because not only are we dealing with, we're not able to like go and have like close contact with people and meet face to face, but we're also dealing with like a global pandemic that's like affecting so many different um, like parts of life. I'm Ashton Kale. Um, I'm a sophomore at Shake Jesuit. And my idea of distance giving would be to stay as active as possible you can in your community and to stay in contact, well, not real contact, but contact with the issue and that realize that there are issues that are heightened right now and that you can't do something about it. And like an example of me moving back would be uh, every weekend, I mentor some middle schoolers online and like check up with them, see how they're doing and then like it's good for them in a way to, you know, keep contact with some older peers, see how it's going, but you know, still staying safe. I'm Duncan McLaren. I'm a junior at St. John's School. I've been with the uh, uh, GHCF for like two, three years now. I think, so like distance giving would be like, I think somebody earlier mentioned like changing or being the catalyst of change. And I think that's a really good way to put it because we can't be going out and like, physically working on projects or like going out and physically seeing all these different like sites. We can't be doing site visits. So it's a lot more remote. And I think the way that we can really like give back to our community is through uh, like being the catalyst, like somebody earlier said. I'm an eighth grader at River Oaks Baptist. And um, my idea of distance, like, helping would be to like to continue figuring out things to do from home and be able to find ways to still like reach out to people but from a distance and be able to still donate and do things. I'm Alex Frankfurt. I'm a junior at Episcopal High School. I'm Olivia Frankfurt. I'm a junior at Episcopal. And um, making a difference um, in a distance means to me um, being able to complete these charity events and things that use time, money, and energy without, you know, having necessarily put your face or name behind it. So being able to do work without necessarily getting like a pat on the back, congratulations. <laughs> to me, it's like the same thing as Alex. I just think from a distance, it's still like equally as important while we're all virtual. I think it's equally as important to help make a difference. So to me, it means like making people's lives better as much as we can through being online in any way we can possible. Hello, my name is Tally Waters. I'm a junior at St. John's School, and I'm here to talk to you today about an organization called Books Between Kids. Books Between Kids is a nonprofit whose mission is to put books in the hands of children in Houston who otherwise may not have had access to them. Um, Books Between Kids was started by two women named Amy Barnes and Sandra Alhorn, who were motiva motivated by the fact that many children in Houston don't have access to books in their homes. In November of 2012, the two women um, started Books Between Kids to address the greater needs of Houston. They set up this organization to help the thousands of children who don't have access to books. The lack of books for impoverished children put them at a major disadvantage in schools. And there are studies to show that children who have books in their home are more likely to stay in school. You can help Books Between Kids by making a donation, donating books, organizing a book drive, or volunteering your time. So far, they've distributed 1,768,924 books to children since 2013. This is a great organization in the Houston community because it directly benefits 
thousands of children all over the city and because you can help just by donating books or volunteering your time. I'm Julia Holstein. I'm the Director of Programs at Books Between Kids. We try to serve as many children in Houston as we can. We primarily focus on um, children who may or may not have access to books in the home. Um, and then through all of our programs, we give out books to um, either schools or community partners that then give them out to their students. Without donations from the community, um, we would not be able to do nearly as much as we're able to do in the community with our book donations. And so any donations that come in um, will you know, be processed and then go straight back out into the community as soon as we can get them out there. And so um, all the donations we'll get from this event are invaluable to our programming. We never ever get enough books in Spanish. And so any Spanish books that your family can donate, your families, your donors can bring to us, we would really appreciate those. We have um, a lot of the people we serve um, are in a Spanish speaking population. And so we wanna be able to serve them as best we can. Um, so always Spanish books, um, and then really anything in that elementary age level from fifth grade and down um, we'll be able to use. But yeah, Spanish books and picture books are our big ones. We are particularly working with their House of Taney Treasures program where we're getting books out to their early childhood programming. We're actually going to go out to their trunk retreat this year to give out books for their um, kind of family events. And so we've just started building that partnership a little bit more. Making a difference at a distance means that we can still serve our communities even though we can't have people in our warehouse. We are always looking for book donations and so um, families can clear out their books at home, um, work with their neighborhood, get books that way, um, and you know work at home, work at a distance, and then bring all their materials to the office and we can still get them out. So it really means that we're able to continue our work. Hi, I'm William Suttle. I'm a junior at St. John's and I'm going to tell you about Generation Serve. Generation Serve's mission statement is to engage children in volunteerism and empower them to make a difference in their communities. The brief history of Generation Serve is that it began in 2009 in order to help connect families in Central Texas with local nonprofits. They serve as a resource to help people who want to volunteer by providing information about a variety of charities in the area that need hands-on volunteers. In this way, families can sign up to help as often as they like, and children as young as three years old can participate. Generation Serve also believes that children benefit from volunteering alongside their parents and seeing their role models in their parents. Uh, one really cool thing they've done during COVID-19 is they found a unique way to help families and children volunteer by putting together supply kits that can be completed at home, supporting four different organizations. Families can purchase as many supply kits as they want or need and then take them home to complete. I'm Karen Sweetland. I am the site director for Generation Serve here in Houston. We offer family volunteering opportunities for children ages 3 through 17. We firmly believe that um, volunteering together as a family um, and helps kids with 21st century skills such as building empathy, creating a passion, and leads them on a service pathway. So they grow up wanting to volunteer and be involved and become our future community leaders and philanthropists. We are always looking for great families to come and volunteer with us. We have, uh, the best way to do this is actually to get involved and get our um, updates, but we have, uh, by going to our um, web page, which is generationservehtx.org. And when you go there, you can register your family, read all about us, and go to our calendar. And if you go to the Houston calendar, you see we have multiple um, service um, opportunities for families and for teens. And um, in fact, we have about 25 opportunities right now that are both virtual. We have a few modified in person as well with safety protocols in place. We are so very grateful for our partnership to the Greater Houston Community Foundation. When we were first talking about expanding from Austin into Houston, um, we reached out to the Greater Houston Community Foundation and realized that there was a great way for us to bring our missions together. And we could offer some um, hands-on, high-touch, service opportunities that families at the Community Foundation were craving. Making a difference at a distance means to me that we all need to continue to work to help make a difference in our community, even in times such as these, or especially in times such as these, when we need to not be 
together, um, volunteering in a more high touch, uh, hands on way. Um, and Generation Serve is trying to do that by offering virtual opportunities. Search Homeless Services, founded by Houstonians concerned with increasing homelessness within the city in 1989, supports people who are homeless by providing them with opportunities for greater stability. Thanks in no small part to Search, the number of people living on the streets in Houston has fallen by more than half since 2011. Search alone provided nearly 1,000 people who were homeless during 2019 with different kinds of support, rehoming nearly 300 clients and providing them with emotional and financial support and opportunity. In addition, House of Tiny Treasures, a preschool for children whose parents experience homelessness, provides education, food, and other support for young children when their families might struggle to do so. Search's mission is to provide hope, create opportunity, and transform the lives of men, women, and children who are trying to break free from the cycle of poverty and homelessness. They bring this mission to life every day by helping clients obtain permanent housing, increase their income, improve their health, develop their children, and ultimately achieve independence. My name is Tao Costas, and I'm the president and CEO of Search Homeless Services. Search has always been focused on helping people, individuals and families who are homeless, move from the streets into jobs and safe, stable housing. Search, because of COVID-19, the coronavirus, and how all of our services have had to adjust and our communities have to adjust, the access to food, to regular resources that people who are still living on the streets and, and struggling to survive really becomes even more enhanced. So what we are asking is that our friends and supporters um, put together food kits that uh, would enable them to really sustain themselves for a little bit longer than the traditional uh, amount of time. These uh, kits, are to help people uh, who are out on the street be able to obtain food or have food for a little, little bit longer than the day-to-day. -day. Making a difference from a distance means to me that people of our entire community is connecting, connecting to each other, to people in need, and, and registering the importance of each other's situations. So it is so vital that even though we can't be physically together, that we are paying attention and raising our level of conscientiousness about inequities and that we want to raise everybody's abilities to do well in life, to have good health, to have safety, to be able to have food and to have the opportunities to not be fearful and to be productive. So it is so important, even though we're doing it from a distance, to show that we care and that we're in this still together. Um, okay, so I hope everyone enjoyed learning about all those organizations and hearing from our youth leaders. And so would anybody like to share what they learned from today's program or something that stood out to them? So I think that was something that was pretty interesting was I did not know that Spanish books were like really, <clears throat> excuse me, were really like a necessity or not necessity, but like we're in short supply to like to places like books between kids. Cause I know I have a few Spanish learning books from like when I was a kid. And so I think I might try to drop some more of those off this afternoon. Um. Okay, I guess if uh, nobody else uh, has, uh, would like to share, then um, we would like to take a group picture. 
The only thing, I, 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 sorry, Emery, real quick. I was just going to share. Um, hi, I'm Renee with the Guardians and the Community Foundation. I was just going to share that I learned how inspiring all of you teenagers can be. I thought it was awesome to hear you talk about uh, what philanthropy and giving meant to you at a distance, and to hear all your different perspectives from everything. Of it does, it means getting recognition. So it means being a catalyst. So it means, um, you know, still learning about people's problems. So I just want to say it's awesome after five years to see how much this program has grown. And want to thank you um, for, for your outstanding leadership and, and also thank our team, Allison uh, and Alicia and Allison Sullivan and Jennifer, because uh, it's really awesome to just see you all and hear everything you have to say. You're really inspiring to all of us who do this work every day. Thank you for that. That was very nice. Um, uh, so for everybody who's donating something today, we would like to invite you to grab a book or a snack pack and then hold it up and smile because we're going to be taking a group picture with our donations. I... I'm and not exactly sure how that'll work. Alice so maybe and Sullivan else. will help do that. And what I want to add to that, also thank you, Emery and Isha, for your leadership. Even if you haven't collected your books or your snacks, we want you in the picture because you are here today and you are learning, and that's a big part of it. So if you have books that you're going to donate, um, you can hold them up. But we want to see your faces. If you haven't, if you haven't done that yet, still, still. Um, be in the picture and Allison Sullivan, you just tell us what you need to do because there's like two, I, I have like two screens worth of people on here. So you might have to do two pictures, I don't know. Sure, um, uh, I'll give everybody just a few se few seconds and then I will count down from five um, and then I will take the photo. Um, so, so it looks like we have a good number, lots of books, lots of snack packs. Oh, yeah, this is great. Okay. I'm and I also, I, I want to say, I, um, I want everyone to know that at least earlier, and I can't see everyone all the time, but Julia and Tao have been on this call this morning. Hi, Julia. If you want to say anything, please do, because you won't get a chance to meet everyone. Well, maybe if they drop off in their cars. Do you want to say anything? Sure. I just want to say thank y'all. This is a, like um, Renee said earlier, it's y'all's leadership and dedication to doing this work, even though we're kind of in a crazy time right now, is really inspiring. So just thank y'all. And because of what y'all are doing to help us out, we're going to be able to serve more kiddos. So thank y'all. And um, Tao, I think may have left, but- um, I'll do the research Molly. though. This is Molly oh, Connor. okay, Molly. Okay, um, good. I'm so sorry. I'm so sweaty. I am currently okay. unloading donations at search, but I'm really looking forward to meeting Allison this afternoon. And thank y'all so much for the snack pack gift. We, we really appreciate it, especially right now when we have such heightened food insecurity among our clients. So thank you, everybody. It's good to see all of y'all. Thank you, Molly. Glad I'm glad you guys joined us today. It's really great to see you at least on Zoom. Okay. All right, it looks like we have uh, quite a few people that have things. So I'm gonna go ahead and count down from five. So five, four, three, two, one. Got it. Thank you all, we really appreciate it. We have a few more things to say, I think, Allison. Yeah. Well, we'll hand it back. We didn't hear you, Allison. We're going to hand it back to Isha for a few closing remarks, and then I'll, I'll finish out the program. OK, so the next grant cycle for the Family at Giving Circle will start in January 2021. If you are a seventh grader or older and are interested in joining the youth leadership team, please let Allison know. Emory and I and the rest of the team are all inviting you all to come and join us. So I'm excited to announce that we are able to collect over 500 packs for search homeless services. Our goal of donating books for Book Between Kids, oh sorry, our goal for donating packs was exceeded. We, we were all able to collect 700 books for Book Between Kids. Oh my God, sorry. And thank you all for your support and hard work. 
and making a difference at a distance for each organization. To close out the program, I will hand it over to Allison Hare Pale for a few final remarks. Great, thank you so much, uh, Isha and Emery for emceeing. And again, thank you all for being here with us this morning and for joining our virtual portion of Family Philanthropy Day. Um, I really appreciate, of course, Isha Venkul and Emery Ying for their help in seeing the program today. And of course, all 19 members of our youth leadership team for their time, not only today, but just in general. Again, um, these young men and women really care about their community and, and it shows in every way. Um, before we part, I do have a few announcements. Um, first of all, we will share the entire recording of today's program in a post-event email. So please feel free to share that with your family and friends or watch it again if you have free time. Um, in addition, if you are watching today and you are in seventh grade or you're older, and you're interested in joining the youth leadership team, please watch the testimonial videos that we have from the current members of our youth leadership team, which will be found in a post event email. I would like to give special thanks to Charlie Hartman, Duncan McLaren, Isabel Pesikoff, Alistair Hafner Schnee, and Ashton Ko for sharing their youth leadership team experiences. Uh, we are always looking to welcome new families to the Family Giving Circle, and I hope that I can connect with each of you soon. So with that, we will now end the program. To Wait, give Allison, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think um, Maya uh, yeah. wants to say, Mia, yeah. I'm sorry, Mia wanted to say something. <laughs> so I told him, yeah, hi, Mia. Hi. This afternoon, I'm going to donate 1,000 books to you guys for the book. Oh. Wow, Wait, 1,000 books. Wait, That's say awesome. that again. I'm going to donate 1,000 books today. Yeah, she, she, oh, we oh. just, we just counted the books last night. Uh, surprisingly, we got over a, a 1,000 books from family and friends. It's a great, it's a great oh result. Uh, can you tell us how you did that? I did that. Um, me and my mommy went to collect a lot of books from our house and her friends' houses. And your friends. Yeah. And yeah. Friends. You must have a lot of very generous friends. And yeah, it's a, it's a great outcome. Um, we are so happy. So this afternoon around two o'clock, we're going to drop off all the books. Yeah. You're going to need a big car for that. Yeah, the trunk is filled with books, so... Um, we still need to put like pack up the other books. Yeah, we need daddy's so, help. <laughs> yeah. I think um, I hope we have some other people there at two o'clock when you drop off your books to see that, and we'll be we'll be there to help you unload them. Okay. Okay. Great. So I hope uh, Julia, you guys are ready for a thousand books <laughs> <laughs> and more from everybody else too. Right. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. Mia actually learned a lot right today, this program. And um, this is her first time to participate. Um, she's so she's so happy. <laughs> We're so glad that you participated with us and we hope we get to meet you in person sometime. No, I know. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. we met you, Shalbo, but we haven't met. <laughs> right, Mia we hasn't been. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. What a great way to end, Allison. I don't know if the, you had any other announcements. I, I have just a few. I, I think the thousand books is going to trump any announcements that I have, but um, good thing that we're strong for those of us taking the collections today. And, and it's, I, this is a, you know, a great testament to why we all come together for Family Philanthropy Day. We, we never know what kind of participation we're gonna get. And again, we're so grateful to our families for coming together during everything that's been going on. So um, Mia, great, great job to you. You need a sticker, you need a high five. Um, we so appreciate your donations. So um, we're gonna end the, the virtual portion of our program now. We're gonna give everyone time to stretch, go eat lunch, go enjoy this beautiful weather that we're having. Um, for our families dropping off books and snack pack donations, we look forward to seeing you 
at Books Between Kids starting at 1 p.m. As a reminder, for the safety of our families and our staff, we will be taking COVID-19 precautions. So we will be wearing our masks and socially distancing. If you are coming to the drop-off, we do encourage you to stay in your car if you're not physically handing off a donation. Um, and our staff will be on hand to take your generous donations from the trunk of your car your thousand books from the trunk of your car. Um, just as a reminder, Books Between Kids is located at 9947 Harwin Drive. The zip code is 77036. And uh, if you are not able to attend the drop-off today, please email me directly for additional times and locations. And with that, we will close the program. Thank you again for your time today, and we hope to see you at 1 p.m.